So the okay. I'm fine. Up running. Okay. So thank you everybody for having me. It's a pleasure. As um <clears throat> Eleni told you, just met uh Hara twice and last time in um San Francisco. So we set up this meeting. Um, the idea is just to give you a broad overview of what I've been doing during my PhD in the field of structural health monitoring of bridges, and maybe there is some way for us to connect and do something together and open up for collaboration, which is something I feel like we miss uh, in Polymy, but Polyacti Milan, but mainly in Europe com compared to what I've seen in the US where they try to you know bridge the gaps and connect a lot to share common grounds and research. Um, so, uh, should change slide? Yes. Yeah, this is me. Uh, I've always been messing around with construction stuff. So I really like to build stuff and the coolest one were dikes and bridges to connect people, you know, big, big buildings. Uh, this guy here, uh, it's from here, very small town, you can see on the right, uh, in between Florence and Rome. So very quiet place. Uh, this is how it looked like. So it's beautiful countryside, very calm. I wander around on a bike, playing football and whatever. And it's very cool until you are 18 years old when it becomes terribly, terribly boring. This is why 18 years old, I took a train, to Milan, much crowded, city life, nightlife, enjoyed a lot. Uh, but then the hard time started when I got into this place. So Polytechnic in Milano, I did here my bachelor degree in mechanical engineering, and then also um, my master's degrees. And after kind of a lot of efforts, but also good times, I would say, I graduated. And Twice a picture, not because I'm, uh, I'm, I didn't know how to fit the slide, but because I got a double degree in mechanical engineering and management engineering. We have a very nice uh, program that basically instead of doing five years, you can do six and you get a double master's. And it was, it turned out to be really useful, uh, especially because when dealing with, you know, bridge monitoring is, deals a lot with management of assets. And I think it was valuable to get to understand also the economic perspective of this and not just focus on the uh, technical side of the story. Since I enjoyed a lot of Polymy, uh, I just decided to stop here, which is our department, uh, Department of Mechanical Engineering, uh, Polytechnic in Milano, uh, where I started my PhD. And this is, let's say, the most juicy part of the presentation. Very briefly, my timeline um, started in the end of 2019 and ended in January 2023. Uh, everything I focused on is structural health monitoring applied to bridge management. Uh, we did many things, but the main project I followed are this one, Regione Lombardia project, which is uh, the, ones, uh, the one that brought me in the field. And then we, and this is mainly roadway bridges. And then I focus on railway bridges with Italfair and RFA, which are two sub, subsidiary companies of the basically the, the, the big um, state owned company that manages um, railways in Italy, Ferrovia lo Stato. And then, as Eleni told you, spent my last year at MIT Central Hospital Lab visiting, working on a project that's called Good Vibration. And it's really related, focuses on um, drive by monitoring of roadway bridges. Very briefly, so you all know this. I first thing I had to start with was to understand what is structural health monitoring. And it's more of a, you know, a process than just a, uh, a technique. So it involves a lot of things from the design of the system um, to you know how to analyze data and most important, what do we make with those data that we collect and we analyze. So how we can extract useful information and how those information can help the decision makers in terms of uh, best practices of management of the network. Um, so very, uh, again, briefly objective. So extraction of information aside from data, possibly continuous data, it depends on the application. 
so to support the decision making process uh, in terms of asset management. What we want to do is to, redu to reduce uh, maintenance costs and indirect costs that are linked to interruption for whatever problem you have on the on the line. So that can be uh, accidents or tests or whatever. Uh, it's nice to reduce the cost associated with those things. Of course, you cannot improve what you do not measure. So you need to get data and to extract information on the uh, capacity of the structure. So more really related to resistance and durability. And then what uh, causes damage or degradation and at what stage any possible damage uh, is now. Um, actions of the structure, environmental effects, so temperature, humidity, wind. Um, and everything about traffic, um, you know, river in action uh, in case of uh, bridges over over rivers. This is the first project. Um, uh, basically, uh, what we've been doing is working. It was just after you know the bridge collapse in Genoa, so it was a bit of a hurry, and we out of the blue we discovered, hey, our bridges are raging. There's a problem. Let's do something about that. Uh, Lombardy region, uh, where you know where Port Decatur is, uh, has a huge heritage. They have the ten percent of the overall Italian heritage of bridges, and they wanted to uh, go uh, deep into road infrastructure monitoring with focus on bridges, and they <clears throat> had to start from zero basically. So they needed to uh, focus on the old network instead of a single bridge establish intervention priority, measure structural risk and the impact on the, on the overall network, define objectives of bridge monitoring, evaluate the quality of the monitoring system. So from blank paper, let's do something about this. And this is the project I started with. And it was um, also, I was lucky to start with this because we had to start from the very basis of the monitoring activities. Uh, for this, it involved a lot of uh, 30 people are involved uh, because many departments, some of us uh, were focusing, you know, really on the structure, so mechanical engineering, civil engineering, while mathematical and management engineering were more involved into the analysis of impact of road closure, bridge collapses, and all those things related to the network. Uh, so it was very interesting uh, contamination about different cultures and departments. What we need to deliver was uh, basically two things. This is uh, how to classify different bridges and how to prioritize intervention on the basis of documentary research. So uh, we uh, went into the archives and, and about collecting information, we had to establish which bridges were to be ranked first in terms of you know structural problems and also impact on the overall availability of the network. And then there was a really uh, hard engineering part, which was how to build a guideline about monitoring, because what the region needed was a benchmark so that they could evaluate if the projects that were that you know entities were proposing to them were actually eff uh, effective and efficient for the problems they were facing for the bridges of the network. Uh, so we started by selecting, we analyzed the heritage, so we found some very common structural archetypes in the overall uh, network of Regione Lombardia. Uh, so long bridges on rivers, arch bridges, masonry, uh, you know, every kind of possible viaducts over streets. And the idea was, okay, let's select some pilot cases to uh, that could represent well the overall heritage and use them you know as structural archetypes to develop to, to study and develop monitoring solutions so these are uh, eight of uh, we ended up using eight bridges so these are the bridges we targeted for each of them we design um a, you know numerical model a monitoring system uh, and data analysis algorithm to try to understand what are you know the problems of each kind of structural archetype and help the region to you know evaluate possible potential project on bridges that were not necessarily these ones but some other bridges featuring the same structural characteristics. Uh, what are, what was uh, the expertise we uh, we gathered from this project? So 
we learned how to design different monitoring systems for different kind of bridges with specific needs and circumstances in terms of you know geography, traffic, and environmental effects. And we tested a lot of different sensor and sensor types and compare you know quality of the data, durability of the sensor, cost, um, and all obviously we took. Uh, we had two years of continuous and heterogeneous data collected from different bridges, which is really a very nice heritage to work on and to develop new techniques and to test new techniques. And also, you know, we started exploring the literature method of analysis tools. Uh, we implemented and tested some algorithms uh, using static data and dynamic data coming from mechanical engineering, we were more used with, you know, vibrations, but we discovered there's also a beautiful world behind statics. So we got to use about that. Um, and also we started to learn how to put in communication FE models with data from the real structures to, you know, to perform monitoring, uh, model uh, calibration, and then uh, possible prediction. And this was the very first project uh, on monitoring. Then, Moving to uh, this project uh, from Italfer is uh, again really, as you can see, focused on bridges, and it was very close to my hometown. You know, the linea is this called Direttissima line, and run is the high speed railway line, and we were focusing on the trade between Florence and Rome. So I, it was during COVID, so uh, there was no one around, and we could perform our tests. Uh, these are some uh, pictures of the viaducts, and here uh, the project was a completely different nature. So they wanted to um, increase the speed on the line, and to do so, they needed to assess the visibility and the capacity of those structures to bring to you know to withstand the new loads, uh, respecting the regulation limits. So it was uh, a transient nature campaign. And basically we went for material characterization, uh, check model frequencies and see how it coupled with, you know, the new speed of the new trains. Um, so basically we had to design a totally different system. Uh, the experimental campaign was run on uh, 138 byte expands and they are featured um, basically uh, from the same characteristics. You see uh, two examples of cross sections, uh, box girder and uh, just trusses. And since they were basically uh, equal, the same kind of spans, just uh, with different lengths, we tried to uh, aggregate them in terms of you know, uh, their length. And we found that all the heritage was built by uh, three, six, eight uh, equal spans, just uh, different lengths. So we were expecting to find similar structural characteristics in terms of uh, you know, model parameters on these structures. Uh, the setup was very, uh, very simple because we had to do two things, uh, train characterization, and that's why we put, you know, sensors on the sleepers, so accelerometers on the sleepers, and also sensors on the span because we wanted to find, you know, the model characteristics of each span. Uh, the campaign was uh, kind of quickened, so we, we put sensors on each span for one night. And the simple the system was very simple. So commercial wireless means accelerometers linked with their uh, basically gateway and acquisition system. Uh, so totally different from the other project. Um, what we learned is to how to you know was first time to use fully commercial wireless systems, which has very nice characteristics. Like you know it's very quick, it, no cables, easy to install. But it has many con cons related to synchronization, you know, delays and possible samples that you lose. So not as reliable as cable system we were used to. Uh, but then again, we got a huge data set of hundreds of trains crossing uh, bridges with same structural properties. And we also um, knew the trains because, you know, when you deal with trains, you know, you can get to know the traffic that's on the bridges. So we implemented algorithms for trains recognition, exploit, exploiting acceleration data instead of uh, strain gauges, which are usually uh, used for train recognition, the load recognition. And the nice thing was to, we worked on uh, 3D case, you know, because when the train, the mass ratio between the train and the viaduct is significant. It's not like, 
cars. So we wanted to analyze the 3K and not the force motion. Uh, we had a lot of data, so we had to find a way to uh, carefully separate what was the force motion and what was the 3D case so that we got a um, clean model parameter instead of, you know, the one spoiled by some loads from the train. And, and then again, model analysis techniques were pretty much there. So we studied what was available, uh, FDD, SSI, and, you know, different techniques. And what was cool we could apply in, in this case statistical methods because we are we were now focusing on bridges with uh, you know as I said same characteristics so we could find outliers among the different spans we were focusing on. All the things we learned on these two projects were very useful for the third one, which is I think the most complete one. This is with uh, Rete Ferroviaria Italiana. Um, again, it's the the aim is similar to Lombardy region. But they wanted something um, more real, more useful. So they also wanted, um, it's hidden there, but a software that could perform automatically data analysis and early warning deployed on their customer service. So they really wanted kind of a mock-up of a product that they could uh, realize. So we needed to focus on those problems that are uh, the most, uh, let's say, relevant for each kind of bridge. Um, and also we try to aim at localization, at classification and assessment of the damage, not just focusing on, you know, anomaly detection, because they wanted to uh, know more about when to intervene, where to intervene and how close, how big was the problem. So we try to target all these problems. And then we deploy the software for automatic data analysis and early warning directly on their on their server. This is also the project where you know the idea of the startup came out because it was, it's more uh, kind of a product than just a research a research project. Um, so what we needed to deliver was monitoring system on, on pilot cases, so build and calibrate FE models to simulate demo scenarios. Everybody knows that we cannot damage actual bridges, so the problem. In order to get supervised data, you need to use FE models. And we installed, design and installed a practically monitoring system on these bridges. And we studied uh, facing machine learning to study and test methodology for data cleaning, information extraction, and damage uh, detection because we wanted something that was more automatic and data driven. Again, we formalized some monitoring guidelines, guidelines with a lesson learned within the project, and we deployed the software that they are now using on these three bridges to perform anomaly detection. Uh, these are the two other bridges. The first one was the uh, initial one, the Masonry Art Bridge, and this is a, a war and trust steel bridge, pretty popular uh, structure, let's say, type of bridge in roadway, in railways. Um, and this is a CA, you know, a rainforest concrete bridge on, on a river. Uh, so these were the three bridges we targeted. Um, so this was, again, a really complete project because we also had to face, you know, problems with integration and IT systems and automation and data fidelity and security. So, and also what was really interesting was the first time that we could um, go through machine learning techniques to, for example, we use them as I presented in Stanford to um, target temperature effect, traffic effects. And, and also what was really interesting, we could cooperate with the company to find uh, the so-called alarm thresholds, which are kind of a, a big pain because it's not easy to, you know, to define when it's time to act and when you can say, okay, there is damage, but we can withstand it. So it's not really urgent to go there and do something. Um, and also we took another perspective. So instead of, again, monitoring whatever happened on the bridge, we designed optimal, um, optimized sensor network for each kind of bridge so that we could target the problems we know that were the most relevant ones for those kind of bridges. 
Um, then my ear, uh, it's MIT Center Book City Lab, which is the uh, really the one I really focus on my thesis, which is on drive-by monitoring. Um, this is the origin of the of their project back in two thousand eighteen, I would say. So this was a starting point. So the idea back in 2018, I took over the project in uh, 2022. They've been doing many things. They started a very big collaboration with ANAS, which is a big um, uh, provider of, you know, a, a big um, road manager uh, co management company in Italy, the biggest, I would say. And they started collecting a lot of drive-by data with ANAS cars on several bridges. Um, so for those who are not familiar, uh, if any driver monitoring concept is kind of straightforward, so um the vehicle just be, behaves as a carrier signal carrier so you put a sensors in there they were trying to use smartphone you can use a commercial wireless sensor and basically you try to get vibration from the car which of course filters out some of the vibration to understand what's going on on the bridge it's evident that this is cool in terms of you know cheapness and you can exploit opportunistic data collection of course, it has a lot of problems to deal with. Uh, the fundamental idea going deeper into the is just you have the bridge uh, that excited by many things, wind, foundation loads, traffic, whatever. And you have your vehicle that carries um, you know, uh, an accelerometer, let's say. The bridge vibrates and puts excites the car. Let's suppose let's uh, say that for now one car impact is negligible uh, in this in at this point in time. Um, vibration go through uh, arrived to the sensor, but not only damp vibration of the bridge, but also car vibration. And this is the really tricky part. So it's difficult to understand. What is the bridge and what is the car? And this is what I really focused on, uh, not from a software point of view, but really from a hardware point of view. So mechanical analysis of the of the system. Uh, so these are these were the, some of the research topic I addressed uh, during my year there, uh, bringing in some expertise I got from some driver projects I run on my own in uh, during Polymy, uh, two years in Polymy. So I want to explore some stuff like compare, uh, for example, um, smartphones with commercial sensor, uh, assess the spatial accuracy of GPS, uh, assess the effect of the vehicle dynamics, so test different vehicle to understand how the filter would change on the data, and you know, traveling speed and other stuff related to uh, the excitation of the vehicle and of the bridge. So I conducted a very, uh, Nice experiment on the Cadore Bridge in northern of Italy, uh, in Veneto. Um, why this bridge? Because they had been running a drive-by campaign with Anas cars. So they got more than 1,000 of trips over the bridge with the cars. So we had a huge data set to compare with. Um, I performed a drive-by data collection with e-scooters because I wanted to test a different vehicle compared to cars. Uh, I use a smartphone and a wireless accelerometer to compare different sensors and, and see uh, what I wanted to assess was, you know, uh, many research, address many research questions in terms of sensor performances, GPS, the how can we choose the proper diagnostic vehicle to couple it with the proper bridge, um, you know, and optimize overall the process also in terms of traveling speed um, in the, uh, and how it impacts the mode shapes estimation and frequency estimation. Um, so this is me doing some stuff. These are the um, e-scooters we used to run over the bridge a hundred times. 
And these were the wireless sensor network we deployed to, you know, to get some ground truth on the bridge. So we went, you know, uh, with a standard ABT test, what are the, uh, what should we expect in terms of model properties on the bridge? Um, and these were a lot of data we were, we could compare. So we got accelerometers on the bridge, smartphone into NS cars crossing the bridge, smartphones on e-scooters and accelerometers on e-scooters. So we could, uh, let's say, isolate each variable and I adopted a so-called leave one out strategy. So to make comparisons that allow to isolate the contribution of the three variables that I wanted to study. So for example, if I compare uh, data collected uh, with smartphones on e-scooters and with smartphones on cars, of course, the difference is made by, I can say that in the first, in first principle, the difference is made by the vehicle. So I could assess uh, how the vehicle could impact on the research I was trying to conduct. And then since I was there, there were a lot of uh, contamination with people from different backgrounds. And um, I tried to uh, perform a feasibility study about crowd sensing. So how can we collect data in a shared way and use them to, uh, to benefit in terms of data <clears throat> analytics for urban bridges. Uh, why did I do so? Because I noticed that the micromobility phenomenon was exploding in the US as it is now in, uh, in Europe. And so I would, and I got to know that every uh, uh, e-scooter has a, an accelerometer in there that the company uses to detect, uh, you know, misbehavior, misconducts from from people. Um, what if we could uh, would, uh, get access to this data from accelerometers to use uh, to monitor urban bridges? Um, so I got to know a company, um, um, Link Scooters, basically, and they gave me data from a share. They shared some trips from the US. So I got a real data set, uh, one year of trips from May 2021 to May 2022 in 11 US cities that are recording the map. And the data set was basically when the trip was run. Uh, starting location and endpoint of the trip, so that uh, basically I could know everything about the trip, so where it started, where it ended, and what time of the year. So I tried to see, uh, to count basically, how many uh, scooter trips were crossing different different bridges in those 11 cities in one year. Um, so I set a threshold of uh, 100 crossing, uh, Per each bridge to understand how many times this ha how many bridge uh, were featured by 100 crossing per year. Um, so these are some of the of the results in two parts. Um, so this this plot is uh, how many bridges. So you see the number of bridges here. How many bridges with at least that many scooter crossings uh, in their minimum two months. So uh, why two months? Because I wanted to uh, couple data. With similar, you know, environmental conditions, not a coupling analysis from December and July, and so basically, I the pattern is more or less the same. Of course, they really depend on the topology of the city. Uh, but what I found is that um, there are many cities when even in the winter you have a lot of uh, very relevant bridges, so big bridges in the city where you could get a lot of data if you just collect uh, accelerometric data from the scooters crossing the bridges. And another, let's say, perspective of the analysis was a uh, number of bridges with at least a hundred of passes in the month. So here was a, a, an, an annual breakdown. Of course, as you can see, there is a huge drop in December in winter because no one wants to scoot in winter and the rain or the snow. Uh, still, um, even if you go for the uh, coldest city, like in Seattle, you in August, September, you have 115 bridges with 100 passes. In February, you have 19 because it's crazily colder. Still, there is potential to, you know, to get data in a pretty much continuous way uh, throughout the year from micromobility on bridges. And these data are just referred to one company, which more or less owns the 10% of the market share in those cities. So those data could be 10 times bigger if we could get access to data from all the micro mobility indices. 
this was a bit uh, out of my domain still it was very interesting to develop with people from sensible city lab where they are really focusing on uh, urban data so they were able to give me a strong help on this so finally uh after three years i got my um i got my phd um see this is the main research and um, so on right by monitoring and but then so after this uh what's next i got back to polymi uh, polytechnical where i just started my uh, postdoc uh post i am postdoctoral fellow now but more most important let's say with my with some colleagues of mine and some advisors and uh, shareholders we set up a company in last February, which is called Display. Basically, what we do is we develop a service, monitoring as a service for bridges based on um, IoT nodes that, that can perform um, edge computing to basically let's uh, try to democratize the use of um, uh, monitoring on bridges. The big problem now is related mainly to costs and to not being able to ex extract useful information from the data we collect. So basically we are trying to solve this problem. Uh, uh, this is uh, the team, all of us, three of us PhD from uh, Polytechnico. This guy here spent one year in the TU Delft. And these are some advisors, as I said, my supervisor, so Professor Marco Belloli, um, advisor and shareholder, as well as Professor Carlo Ratti, which is the founder of the lab that hosted me in uh, in in Boston. Um, so what we've been doing in the last ten months, uh, eight ten months, we won a bunch of prizes, which is nice because you know one of the biggest problems of startups is money. So if you can get money, it's not bad. But may, may most important thing, we uh, one month ago we installed our first uh, monitoring system, a pilot study on a masonry arch a railway bridge in northern of Italy. Um, so uh, that's pretty much all. Uh, I was a big overview, so feel free to uh, ask questions about anything. We can talk whenever. And again, the idea is let's do something together. I think uh, we're not far and we can benefit from collaborations. Thank you very much.